Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at quadratic functions and equations in one variable. In this video I'm going to use this set of notes. If you'd like to get your hands on the notes and you'd like to support me as well, I will list down how in the description below. Please check the description. Let's get right to it. When we're learning quadratic functions and equations, it's very important that we know the general form. So what is the general form of a quadratic expression? It is ax squared plus bx plus c. This is an expression. So there is no equals to zero. What about the general form for a quadratic equation? The general form of quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Now let's look at how to identify whether an expression is a quadratic expression or not. Let's look at the first one. We have m squared, assuming that there are no constants here and these are all variables. m squared, power of 2, and we have p to the power of 1. The highest power of the variable here is 2 which is one of the requirements for a quadratic equation. However, we have two different variables. So the question is asking whether it's in one variable. And so this is not a quadratic expression in one variable. Let's take a look at C. Here again, we have only one variable, which is S, and the highest power of the variable is 2. However, this variable is actually with a negative power because this whole thing can be written as s to the power of negative 1. And therefore, this is not a quadratic equation. I will recommend for you to try using the Desmos calculator or any graphing calculator and try to put in this equation and look at the shape of the graph. You will see that it is indeed not a quadratic expression. Let's look at number 2. Determine the values of a, b and c for each of the following quadratic expressions in one variable. Again, this is with reference to our general form, that is this. Now we need to identify a, b, and c. Let's just take a look at this. a will be the coefficient of x squared, b will be the coefficient of x, and c is just the number on its own. Let's try to apply that to these questions. Let's look at a. When we have the x squared term here, the coefficient will be a, and therefore a is equals to negative 6. Don't forget the negative. This negative is for 6. And then we look for b. b is the coefficient of x. But you can see in this equation, we don't have any x. Therefore, it is actually plus 0x, which makes the coefficient of x 0. Therefore, b is equal to 0. And c is just a number. And so we have 9 here. c is equal to 9. Again, if you'd like the answers for the rest of the questions as well, do look at the description on how you can get them. Now that we've reviewed what a quadratic equation or a quadratic expression is, let's look at the relationship between a quadratic function and a many-to-one relation. If we look closely at this graph, many-to-one relation means many objects have one image. More than one object has one image. And the objects are the x values while the image are the y values. So if we examine a quadratic curve, carefully, a quadratic curve has a parabolic shape like this. We look at this image P. You can see that for P, we have two objects, Q and R. And for D, it's the same thing. And you will see this for all values of Y. And therefore, what is the type of relation for a quadratic curve? It is indeed a many-to-one relation. Let's look at the shape of a quadratic curve. If you look at the example on the right, you can see we have two shapes, one that the red curve is curving upwards and the green one is curving downwards. These are the two shapes of a quadratic curve. So how do we determine when the shape is curving downwards or upwards? This determines on the value of a. And so you can remember it like this. When it curves upwards, draw two eyes to the curve and you will see we have a frown, a frowny face. A frowny face is negative. So the shape of the curve will be upwards if a is negative, that is less than 0. And for this curve, when it curves downwards, again, add the eyes and you have a smile. And so the curve will curve downwards if the value of a is positive, a smile, more than 0. Then let's look at the maximum or minimum points. The maximum or minimum points is determined by the shape of the curve as well. So we can follow that. If we have a maximum point, this is an example of a maximum point, the highest point, there will be no point above this. This maximum point only exists when the graph is curving upwards, which means we have a frown, and that means A is negative. 
we have a minimum point that is the lowest point in the curve there will be no point below this when we have a smile and therefore a must be positive we also have the axis of symmetry you can see this is the axis of symmetry where it equally divides the graph into two on the left and the right it acts like a mirror and this equation for this line this is actually just a straight line as you can see so the equation for this line is x is equals to negative p over 2a let's try some questions look at 3a state whether the shape of the following graphs is downward curve or an upward curve so again all we have to do is look at the value of a we've already looked at how to determine the value of a that is the coefficient of x squared so in this case you only see a negative sign in front which means a is negative 1 and therefore we know that a is negative less than 0 if it is negative then we have a frown that's all we need to do to determine the shape let's try the next question for each of the following graphs of quadratic functions, g of x is ax squared plus bx plus c, which is the general form for quadratic expressions, find the range of values of a. Okay, let's look at one question and let's try this first. Let's look at a. The range of values of a. How do we determine the range based on this graph? Once again, we can see this is a downward curve. This is a smile. That means a will be positive. So the range of values of a will be positive a is more than zero state whether it has a maximum or minimum point again by looking at the graph we know that this is a minimum point there's a lowest point here so we have a minimum point state the equation of the axis of symmetry in this case we don't need to use the formula because we can see clearly that this is where the graph is divided by two whenever we have a vertical line that is cutting the x-axis at a certain number so for example this one cuts the x-axis when x is equals to 2 that is exactly the equation of the line and so the equation of this line this axis of symmetry is x is equals to 2 let's look at more questions find the equation of the axis of symmetry again we are required to find the equation of the axis of symmetry but this time they've given us the quadratic expressions let's try b f of x is equals to 4x squared minus 19 here we need to use the formula so let's mark our a b and c first a the coefficient of x squared is 4 b coefficient of x again we don't have any x so the coefficient of x will be 0 and c just the number is negative 19 therefore the equation for axis of symmetry will be x equals to negative b over 2a which is equals to negative 0 over 2 times 4 which is 0 therefore the equation is x equals to 0 this simply means that for this graph the axis of symmetry is the y-axis y-axis is x equals to 0 let's go on to the next part the effect of changing values of a b and c on the graphs of quadratic function what happens when we change these values how will it affect the shape of the graph again i encourage you to explore this using a graphing calculator i will leave a link for a graphing calculator free graphing calculator in the description below the value of a affects the width and the shape of the graph we'll get into the details later the value of b affects the position of the axis of symmetry we've already seen what the axis of symmetry is and the value of c is the y-intercept of the quadratic curve let's look at a fill in the blanks with either less than or more than for the first function f of x we have a1 as the coefficient of x squared and for g of x the red graph we have the coefficient of x squared to be a2 the question is is a1 bigger or is the magnitude of a2 bigger remember earlier we stated that the value of a affects the width of the curve and when the magnitude of a is greater the graph becomes narrower so when we compare these two the red graph is narrower than the blue graph which means a2 is actually bigger than a1 let's look at the value of b let's look at e for this graph you can see the position of the axis of symmetry so what does this mean for the value of p remember the equation for the axis of symmetry 
x equals to negative b over 2a. In this case, we know that since it is a smile, a is positive. So this value is positive. And when we look at this value of x, which is the x for the axis of symmetry, here we can see that x is positive. Now when we go back to the equation, we need x to be positive. And a is positive. But here we have a negative value. So what is the value of b? b must be negative. That is the only way x will be positive. So for a graph that is curving downwards, when a is greater than 0, when b is negative, the position of axis of symmetry is on the positive side. It works the other way around as well. When b is greater than 0, the position of axis of symmetry will be on the negative side. And if b is equals to 0, the position of axis of symmetry will be right on the y-axis. We can try the rest of these questions and explore this a bit more. Let's look at C. The value of C represents the y-intercept of the curve. And so when you look at this, C is wherever the graph cuts the y-axis. And so the value of C for this particular set of graphs is positive, more than zero. Next, let's look at how to form a quadratic equation based on a situation. Let's look at number seven. A table top has a length of this and a width of this. Write a function for the area of the tabletop. Let's sketch this out first. The tabletop has a length of x plus 15 and a width of x minus 20. How do we represent the area of this table? This will be equals to length times width, which means we will have x plus 15 multiplied into x minus 20. If we wanted to write this as an expression in general form, all we have to do is expand this. So we get x squared minus 5x plus 300. This is the function of the area of the tabletop. Let's move on to roots of a quadratic equation. Fill in the blanks with either equals to or not equals to. If x is equals to k is a root of the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0, then, when you substitute x equals to k into this equation, you should get 0. So, it must be equals to 0. However, if x is equals to k is not a root of the equation, then when you substitute k into this equation, as you can see here, when you put in the values of k into this equation, you will not get 0. So, what are roots of the equation? The roots of the equation are the x-intercepts of the curve. Let's try a question on this. Determine whether each of the following values is a root of the given quadratic equation. Let's look at the first one. x squared minus 4x minus 3 equals to 0. Let's test x equals to negative 1 and see whether this is a root for this equation. All we have to do is substitute. Let's write down the equation first. x squared minus 4x minus 3 equals to 0. Now all we have to do is substitute this value into the equation. So negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 minus 3 is equals to 2, which is not equals to 0. Therefore, we can conclude that x equals to negative 1 is not a root for this equation. Let's move on. Let's see how to determine the roots of a quadratic equation by factorization. This is nothing new to you. You have already learned how to do this in form 2. If x equals to p and x equals to q are roots of the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0, all you have to do is rearrange this such that the right hand side is equals to 0. So we minus p on both sides, you get x minus p equals to 0. And you minus q on both sides, you get x minus q equals to 0. And now we have the factors of the equation, that is x minus p from here and x minus q. The product of these two will give 0. Let's try a question. Determine the roots of each of the following quadratic equations using factorization method. Let's look at the first one. So here, all we have to do is find the factors. If you know how to use your calculator, go ahead and use it. But for practice, I always advise my students to try to solve it mentally. When you have p squared, this is very simple, there's only one possibility, that is p multiplied p. And then we have 33. Negative 33, we have to get 8p. Positive 11 minus 3. 
11 minus 3, we get 8, positive 8. And 11 times negative 3, we get negative 33. So these are the factors for this equation. And now we can determine the roots because p plus 11 must equal to 0 or p minus 3 must equal to 0. That's the only way the product of these two factors will be equals to 0. One of it must be 0. From here, we can go on to find our roots. p is equals to minus 11 on both sides. So p is equals to negative 11 or plus 3 on both sides. p is equals to positive 3. So p is equals to negative 11 and p is equals to 3 are roots of the equation. p square plus 8p minus 33 is equals to 0. Let's move on to the sketching of graphs of quadratic functions. When sketching graphs of quadratic functions, the following must be shown in the sketch. There are three things that you must show in the sketch. First, you must show the value of the y-intercept. And yes, next you need to show the value of the x-intercepts. Finally, you need to show the correct shape of the graph, which is determined by the value of a. Let's try to sketch a graph. Let's look at b. Let's concentrate on the shape first. The value of a here is less than zero. So we know we are going to get a frowny face which is an upward curve. And then we need to find the intercepts. The value of c is negative 3, so the y-intercept is negative 3. Now we have to find the x-intercepts. We need to find the roots of this quadratic expression. This will be equals to, we can use factorization. Let's factorize this. We have negative 2x squared. So that means negative 2x and x. And then we have negative 3. We need to get positive 7. So we can do negative 3 which times 2 will be positive 6 plus 1. That's how we get positive 7. And negative 3 multiplied by positive 1 is negative 3. Now we can find the roots. So when we equate this to 0, when f of x is equal to 0, then negative 2x plus 1 must be equal to 0, or x minus 3 must be equal to 0. Either one of these must be true. It's negative 2x equals to negative 1 or x plus 3 on both sides equals to 3. So this one we've solved it. Here we just need to divide by negative 2. And so you will get x is equals to positive 1 over 2. So now we have our x-intercepts, our y-intercept and the shape. Now we can sketch the graph. Now when we look at this, x is 1 over 2 and x equals to 3, which means both the roots are on the positive side of the x-axis. So we can sketch a graph like this and we can label this as 1 over 2 and this as 3. And then the y-intercept is negative 3. So we can label this as negative 3. Next is forming quadratic equations and solving problems involving quadratic equations. Let's look at this question. The length of a piece of rectangular cardboard exceeds 3 times. The length exceeds 3 times its width by 5 cm. The area of the cardboard is 250 centimeters square. Find the width and the length of the cardboard. Go ahead and give this question a try. You can leave your answer in the comments. I will let you know whether you are right or not. No peeking. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please do me a favor and hit the like button. If you think this will help your friends, do share it with your friends. And do subscribe because I'll be producing at least one video a week. See you guys in the next one.